Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Reward Communication webinar. My name is Kayla Bittner, and I'm a member of Hay Group's team. I'd like to start off with a few housekeeping items before we get started. Please note that you can maximize your screen in the upper right corner to make the slides easier to read. The webinar is in listen-only mode, but we encourage you to send your questions through the chat feature at the bottom left of your screen. At the end of the webinar, we will be reviewing your questions. Today's call is scheduled for 60 minutes. We'll spend about half this time going through the presentation and leave the rest of the time for questions. I'd like to take this time to point out that our Twitter hashtag, PoundRewardCom, is located at the bottom right of every slide as a reminder to tweet insights and feedback from our webinar to your Twitter network. Now I'll pass it over to Dave Borabach to kick us off. Hey, thanks, Kayla, and let me add my welcome to all of you who are joining us for this presentation this afternoon, this morning. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, if you haven't already found the button in the upper right of your screen, it will say View Full Screen, and if you click that, it will be easier for you to see the slides. So you might want to take advantage of that. Also, there's a chat box in the lower left, and if you use that chat box, you can send us questions. We'll ask, actually be, be asking you for those. Uh, throughout the session, so simply type them in as, as you're going along. Here's the presenters today. Uh, obviously, I'm Dave Borbach. I'm talking to you from Pittsburgh. Lucy Mashira, who is our global TRS product manager, is staying up late and coming to us from London. And Rose Aaron, who's the TRS product manager here in the U.S., is from Philadelphia. Uh, you can see our, our email addresses are showing up underneath that slide. At the end of the presentation, we will be sending you a copy of, of the slide deck, so everybody here will get that. So if you have occasion to reach out to us, uh, you'll simply be able to use those email addresses. We're going to start off with some questions. There's three of them, and we'd like you to go through these and answer. Uh, for your own organization, uh, do employees understand and appreciate the value of uh, rewards includes both tangible and intangible forms of rewards. And if you'll simply click whether you agree, uh, strongly agree, uh, what you'll find is that after you've clicked, the messages will start to actually change here on the screen in front of you. And it looks like we're picking up a few strongly disagrees, a couple of agrees. And it looks like we've kind of reached an end. We're getting about 30%. I'll tell you what, we'll go five, five or six more seconds, so if you haven't responded yet, please go ahead and click in. And it looks to me like we're getting, again, in the vicinity of 31% or so, almost a third who are saying agree or strongly disagree, and about half that are saying that it, uh, they disagree with that particular statement. Let's try another. Do you regularly provide employees with total reward statements? There's kind of a neat feature of this, of this technology that we can see how the responses come in as we're, as we're talking. Let's go five more seconds for any further responses. And actually, the number that's – it's a different distribution between strongly agree and agree, but still about 28, nearly 30 percent there. And again, the preponderance of folks, a bit more than a third, saying that, that they disagree with that statement. Okay, here's one more. Do you regularly reinforce reward philosophy and communications with employees? As you see these responses coming in, it's, it's uh, kind of interesting, and it suggests there's a reason why you all are participating with us on this, on this presentation today. Let's go five more seconds. And we're picking up here again, 25 about 
agree and strongly disagree, and once again with the preponderance of folks saying that they disagree with the statement. Well, thanks. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and, and uh, give you an idea of what we'll be covering here uh, in, the, in the presentation today. We structured this presentation, so we'll start with a quick overview of the benefits that come from reward communication. Lucy will then pick up and start to talk about how we can implement a reward communication program, and she'll be illustrating that by focusing on our list of the top ten reward communication practices. Rose will then come in and, and talk about reinforcing the value of rewards through the use of total reward statements. Now, we're focusing on total reward statements for really three big reasons. One is that the TRS statements, total reward statements, make reward communications personal to an employee in a way that just doesn't happen with other, other sorts of communication. It makes explicit the hidden value of benefits. Probably better than any other feature, it makes, it makes the value of benefits explicit. And also, TRS is relatively easy to implement. You don't need to line up a whole lot of ducks in advance before using it. And as Kayla mentioned, we've left a good bit of time for Q&A, so please use the chat session, the chat question uh, feature on the lower left, to send us those messages. Now, the fact that you're participating in this, in this webcast at all suggests that you already have a pretty good idea about the importance of reward communications. Now, you may have noticed yourself that the focus on reward communications is actually trending among HR professionals. Uh, just for just one example, the cover story of the February 2013 issue of Workspan, which is a monthly magazine of World at Work, that, that the February 2013 issue focused on reward communications. Now, that degree of, of attention makes sense. For most organizations, employee compensation is the biggest budget item. And a lot of organizations are asking, do we get the bang for the buck? What you're seeing on this slide are the results of a recent uh, research study that asked participating organizations to rank the different categories that you see here is, is in terms of what they thought were the key drivers that made their reward program uh, most effective. And what you're seeing are the top six. Now look where communication falls. Now obviously, if you have a program that doesn't meet company and employee needs, it's not going to be effective. But communication is more important than the specific pay elements. It's, it's more important than whether the program is aligned with organizational objectives. It's simply a very important element. Now the box at the bottom of this slide is actually taken from, uh, from Tom McMullen in his article from last July in, World at, in, uh, in Workspan. Tom's the North American reward leader for Hay Group, and he commented that reward programs make a difference. The reward programs that do make a difference are, are not the ones that are most innovative or most sophisticated. They're the ones that are most effectively implemented, most effectively communicated in the organization. So we say it's all about reward communication. Now, at the end of the presentation, we'll have a, a, a checkbox. It's a little dialogue box. Uh, that will allow you to indicate whether you'd like to have a copy of this, so we'll give you that opportunity. Or alternatively, you can simply send us a chat message and let us know that you'd like a copy of Tom's article, and we'll send it along to you. A few points to make on this slide. Your reward program was designed, either explicitly or implicitly, to achieve certain business results. Even if you're among the 40% of organizations that don't have a written reward philosophy, you are paying people, and there's some sort of philosophy that's underpinning what you're doing. What reward communications does is ensure that that promise gets delivered. Now, reward communication doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be flashy, doesn't need to be expensive, but you do need to do it because if you don't, employees will fill in the gaps for themselves, and they hardly ever get it right. The last two bullets on this slide get to the linkage between performance and pay, which is a key part of reward communications. People can't head towards a goal unless they know what the goal is. And pay can't motivate and it won't direct employees if they don't understand it. Now, some of you may know that Hay Group has a business unit that focuses on the assessment of employee effectiveness and employee engagement. My colleagues in that unit report that cons the consistent finding that people that have, employees that have a good understanding of the policy behind their pay and benefits are more engaged and they're more likely to agree that they're fairly paid. So to turn a phrase, it's all about putting your mouth where your money is. 
the point we're making here is that a lot of reward value is hidden. That 38%, we've highlighted it there in the first bullet. That's actually U.S. data for a mid-level professional. So over a third of remuneration is in benefits and incentives. We'll look at the third bullet. 52% of employees think they're getting a fair return for their investment in the organization. That means 48% don't. And those 48% might be undervaluing the non-cash benefits they receive. So the question is, do your employees know the value of their health care benefits or the value of the, your organization's contribution to a 401k or a 403b or a pension program? Now, you may have heard stories like I have about employees who leave an organization for a flashier base salary only to come to lament the loss of benefits. Benefits are hidden. They don't pay attention to it. They leave for pay, and then they come to lament that. So it's not just about the size of the paycheck. It's the total, uh, total value of the employment relationship. The conclusion, there, which is highlighted there at the bottom and should probably be in flashing lights, is we really need to communicate the full value of an employee's reward. Now, what you're seeing on this slide are the same three questions we posed at the beginning of the presentation. Now, the results you're seeing here are from organizations that are most admired according to Fortune magazine. Hay Group, on an annual basis, works with Fortune to create the most admired list. And we have a chance to ask those organizations some questions, which identifies what they do and that might help us, might help others. Now, first, before we talk about our own results, notice that even among the most admired organization, there's still an opportunity. There's 20 or 25 percent of those organizations that aren't uh, communicating rewards, using total reward statements, reinforcing the reward philosophy. So even they have an opportunity. Among the folks in our, our survey, we were hovering around 30 percent. This was a percent strongly agree and agree, and we were down around 30 percent. So I think it's fair to say that we have uh, a real opportunity to get better. Now, the question to ponder is, are we not good at communicating because we haven't uh, designed and refined our pay programs as much as we should? Or do we design the programs pretty well, get them in, in the process, and then forget about communication? We wanted to focus on a couple of representative quotes we've had from a couple of our, our clients. One, uh, Bruce Lasko at Avaya, made, made this comment that they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars providing benefits that employees didn't value. Now, obviously, the, the number of millions of dollars you spend is going to vary for each one of us on the call. But could you, could you make that same statement for yourself, changing only the number of millions of dollars that were spent? Liz Baldock, who's at American uh, Modern Insurance Group, made a comment specific around total remuneration statements in terms of the value that she got from providing total remuneration statements and the, and the uh, feedback they got from employees in terms of keeping employees there and keeping them satisfied. So what we've tried to do here is to highlight the value proposition of, of reward communications. I'm now going to turn it over to Lucy, who's going to pick up and talk about implementing rewards communications. Thank you, Dave. So we're going to now turn to the question of how to carry out reward communication. And looking at the slide in front of us, this is our top ten list of reward communication best practice tips. And I'm going to talk through some of these in the next few slides. If you look at the list, the top four are really all about determining what to communicate. The next three are about how to communicate, and the last are about making sure that your message gets through. So how to deliver personalized employee reward communications and how to evaluate the effect of your communication initiative. So on the next slide, I'm going to run through this list, but really just group them into the three subdivisions that I just outlined. And we'll send you a copy of these slides after the webinar, so you will get a copy of this list. All right, so looking at the first three, which, as I mentioned before, are all about determining what you really want to communicate, starting from your reward philosophy and your strategy down to your key messages. 
let's go a little deeper into that. So this is really just quite simply broken down into determining what do you actually want to communicate? What do you want your employees to know and how do you want to say it? As Dave mentioned earlier, you need to tell them what you want them to know or else they will draw their own conclusions. So in doing this, keep your message simple and consistent. So do you want to communicate the results of a pay review, a change to your reward program, introducing a new benefit, or do you simply want to improve the understanding that you, your employees have of your reward pro policy? So once you've determined your message, keep it consistent because it's going to start at the top of the organization and slowly it will filter down through all the employee levels and it will start out really good and clear, but by the time it gets down to the bottom, all that will have been distorted in one shape or form. So the thing to do is keep it simple and that helps you keep it consistent as it flows through the organization. And of course, messages around reward will impact your employer brand. So your message should make sure that the attractive attributes of the organization are made very clear to the employees. And so looking again at the next block of uh, top 10 tips, we have point five through seven, which are really again talking about how to reach your audience. Look at, you know, as I go through this, I'm going to look at line manager involvement because over the years we've come to find that their involvement makes a significant difference in how well received your communications are. So line managers are quite close to employees. They work with them very closely on a day-to-day -day basis and employees tend to trust the information they receive from their managers more than, you know, any other source within the organization. So this makes their line managers a very influential you know, person in employees' lives, and you can leverage this influence. Use line managers to communicate the intent and the rationale of your reward program, so the broad points really. They can also emphasize the intangible rewards of working for your company, things such as flexible working hours, training and career development opportunities, which are things that you can't often attach a value to, but they're part of the reason why employees often choose to join a new employer. And as you get line managers involved, you know, brief them, prepare them for this. And also, as I mentioned before, it's really about the broad points. So they're not ever going to be in a position to answer a question such as, you know, what percentage of an employee's salary is contributed towards their pension plan, but they can communicate, as I mentioned before, the broad philosophy and the key things that you want them to talk about. Part of how to communicate is also thinking about how the different employee groups in your company receive information and process it. The graphic on the screen now shows some popular communication channels across a variety of organizations. So we have the internet, direct communication from line managers, we have workshops, staff handbooks, newsletters, videos, you know, and there's lots more. My, I mean, our advice would basically be use multiple channels where possible and think about how suitable each of the channels that you choose to use is for the different groups you have. Because as I mentioned before, different groups receive information in different ways. And there's no need to invent new channels, so just use what you have. So if you're a manufacturing company in four different locations, you could say put posters around the plant. You could have presentations before or after shift, which is something that's regularly done. If you're a smaller professional services firm, internet and email may be the more appropriate way to go. If the president does a quarterly employee conference call, have the reward message included as part of the call. If, you know, if line managers have regular meetings with teams, include reward on their agenda from time to time. And of course, update your staff handbook because at the end of the day, when I am looking for some information, I'll generally always turn to my staff handbook, as do most employees. So we need to always keep that up to date. And now I'll come to the last block of my top 10 tips, which is really about um, sending your employees reward statements to reinforce the value of the reward program and evaluating the effect of the communication that you've done. So 
So reward statements effectively let employees know what the cash value of their reward packages are. So, you know, Dave mentioned before, people will often make a decision based on cash without considering what the value of the pension plan and other benefits were. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about reward statements because Rose is going to go further into them in the next section and she's going to talk about you know, everything that they can do for you. But what I'm going to talk about now is, because this is about communication, is how to make sure that you know they're distributed so that you have maximum impact when you send them out. And there are a number of options available to companies. So you can use your line managers because they get to deliver some good news and it helps build a relationship with their teams. You can also have home delivery as an option. It allows the employee's family to appreciate their job. And then, of course, as usual, there's always email, there's always internet and online portals. Um, so employees who have access to computers and are online can always use that option. So after you've finished running through your communications program, you planned your message, you considered the audience groups, you sent the message out using the appropriate channels, you sent out reward statements. Let some time go by and then evaluate how effective your initiative was. On the screen now, we've put up a couple of questions that we have in our employee engagement surveys. So if you regularly run an employee engagement survey, these are some questions that you can include to gauge how well your message was received. So Hey Group offers a very simple out-of-the-box effectiveness survey, which you can use for this. Um, so that's another option you have available. And so that's really the whole range of the top 10 items. Begin with planning and end with evaluation after you've executed. I'm now going to hand over to Rose, who will take us deeper into communicating reward using reward statements. Thank you, Lucy. As we've heard so far from Dave and Lucy, total reward statements can be used to remind your employees of the full value of their reward package with your organization. You do want to remind them that there's a lot more to the package that they receive from you than what shows up in that paycheck every few weeks or in that occasional bonus. We've also heard a lot about best practices in communication programs. What's really nice about total reward statements is that you can implement them no matter where you are in the development of your formal communication plan. We're going to go through a few statistics. Dave mentioned early on that about 79% of our most admired organizations do provide statements. You may have seen in that article that we've talked about in WorkSpan in World at Work in February that Overall, 49% of organizations do provide statements, and of those, about half of them outsource the production of those statements to third parties like us. So we're going to take a look at some of the options that we offer. Before we do that, you need to think about a few basic questions. You want to think about the approach that you want to use to provide a monetary value for your benefits. As Lucy mentioned, you want to talk about the appropriate delivery mechanisms that you're going to want to use, and you're also going to want to think about the degree of customization that your statements are going to have. In terms of approach, there are two that you can choose from. There's a cost-based approach, which is pretty straightforward. You add up all of the costs that you pay to your benefit vendors for each of your employees. You aggregate the data with their base pay and their incentives, and then you present it back to employees in the form of a statement. So it's all about addition in a cost-based approach. You can contrast that with an approach that borrows from Hay Group's intellectual property. If you're familiar with our total remuneration surveys, you're already familiar with this approach. This approach as assesses the design of your individual benefit plan and estimates the amount that employees would have to pay if they purchased the benefit themselves in an open market. Because benefits are constant across all of your employee groups or large portions of them, this is a very low-cost alternative. So to bring this approach to life, think about the difference that it would cost a car company to provide a benefit to their, a car benefit to their employees. Probably not very much since they control the cost of the car. However, that's a huge value to the person who receives the car. Uh, another example is a university who provides a tuition benefit. There's very little cost that the university incurs to provide that benefit, but it is a huge value to the employee who receives it. So some organizations elect to use the value-based approach when the cost-based approach won't do their benefit package justice. 
Um, as Lucy mentioned, you're going to think about delivery. If you've got a workforce that's online almost all day, then maybe you want to deliver your statements over the Internet or through your Internet portal. But if your employees are on cash registers or a factory floor all day, you may not want to use an, a web-based delivery system. You may want to think about supervisors handing them out or sending them through the mail. Um, one of the last considerations you're going to think about is how customized do you want your statements to be. You can keep it simple and just present the facts, or you can tailor it so that it can be as customized as you'd like it to be. So let's talk about the first of the two products that Hay Group can provide. First are our total remuneration statements that are simple off the shelf. Um, they're very straightforward in terms of data collection. You send us an Excel file and your summary plan documents. We then we implement that, we put that data into our system, we put the value of the benefits onto each incumbent's record, and we send it back to you for review so that you can have a look at the statements before they're distributed to your employees. This approach uses the value-based methodology that we just talked about, and it's reliable. It's based on 60 years of Hay Group's knowledge and experience. This value-based approach does reduce the impact that buying power has on benefit values, and it's very affordable to you as the buyer. Um, we can, for example, uh, provide, if you want to provide between 500 and 2,000 statements, the cost would be $5,000. I'm going to show you on screen what a statement would look like in this off-the-shelf deliverable. As we've talked about, it's an easy-to-read one-page statement for each employee. It does provide a full breakdown of the value of each reward element. The statements are delivered in PDF or they can be mailed. And this can be configured to a degree to suit your organization. So if you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, there's a place for your logo. Your text can be customized and the signature of the person who's sending the statement can be customized and there, the benefits that you want to highlight can also be customized. If an employee doesn't receive a benefit that other employees do, then that benefit simply won't appear, and so you won't send out a statement with a zero in there to make someone feel bad that they don't get a benefit that other folks do. Next, we're going to take a look sort of at the other end of the spectrum. You can do a very customized online approach that can be delivered in a wide variety of mediums. Statements can be delivered online, in paper, via smartphones and tablets, or any combination of those solutions. These statements are cost-based, and so they're very easy to understand. The dollar amounts presented are simply based on what you pay for the coverages that you provide to your employees. This option is entirely customizable. You can do whatever you want to do in terms of look and feel and content. Whether you provide 10 benefits or 200, you can find a home for them in this option. We're going to take, um, when you receive the uh, PDF after the webinar, of, you're going to have some screenshots of the, on the online deliverable, and I'm flipping through those on the screen. But to give you an idea of the power of the tool, we're actually going to log on to the system. And give me a moment while I share my application. So this is the portal that employee, and an employee would see. The employee would enter their login details and be taken to sort of a dashboard like the one you see on your screen now. You can see up in the, I'm just going to flip through very quickly a lot of the features. If you're at your desk and you're looking at your statement and one of your coworkers walks up, you might want to click the Hide Values button, and you'll notice that all of the sensitive information contained in your statement immediately disappears. You can store historical information for your employees if you'd like. You can also present the statements in different languages. And so when I clicked the Language button and changed it to Spanish, the entire statement immediately turned into Spanish text. There are different sections that you see on screen. Each of these is customized to what you want your folks to see when they log into your portal. You can brand it. You can brand it for different business units. And so, as I said, very, very customizable. 
If Sam, who's the sample employee that we're looking at, wanted to take a look at the rewards that she's provided, she can click on the View Details portion of the portal, and she'll be taken to a page like this. She can, at a high level, see the pie chart and, th and see that of, of her package, $55,000 is provided in compensation, $21,000 in a bonus, $9,000 in incentive awards, and $45,000 in benefits. If she's not sure what those sections are made up of, she can click on the pie, and the corresponding definition will jump out for her. She can also click on the plus sign and get a description of what's included in that portion of the pie. You can also then elect to provide more detail about the many benefits that Sam has provided as an employee. And again, you can click, she can click on the bar to understand what's included in that bar, or she can click on a plus sign. At the top of the screen, you'll notice that there are some menus that you can drive through. Sam can see an option called shares, which means Sam is eligible to receive long-term incentives. If you have a population of employees that isn't eligible, they would not see that choice. There's a section on my future where Sam can see the value of her 401k plan. She can also do some modeling to show what will happen to her savings in the event that she changes how much she contributes to her pay. And so that just briefly, I just wanted to give you an idea of the flexibility of the system and what it can provide for you. And we're going to move on to the wrap up of the webinar. Again, I want to take you back through some of the things that we've heard today. You do want to create pre-release communications before you send your statements, regardless of whether you choose a value or a cost-based approach. If employees don't understand what's coming their way, and if line managers can't field questions, then you're going to lose a lot of the value that you would have attained otherwise. You do want to educate your line managers, as we've talked about, so that they can handle questions accurately. You do want to update handbooks and intranet sites and other sources of information that your employees may go to. You always want to be able to respond to questions clearly. They are going to have state, employees will have questions about your statements, and you do want to respond in clear, easy to understand language, not the HR speak that we're all often guilty of. Last, as Lucy talked about, you do want to measure the effect of your campaign so that you can understand what impact you've had on employees and their uh, understandings of their package. Before we open it up to questions, and we've had a few, um, we're going to ask that you do two more clicks on your screen. Number one, having heard about value-based approach and cost-based approach, which approach would you as a company be more likely to use? So as the answers come in quickly, we're going to run through value. Value is where um, you think that presenting the costs of benefits to employees will not do the benefit package justice, and cost is simply the addition of whatever you spend to provide benefits from your benefit vendors. So we're going to move along to the next and last question, which is indicate for us whether or not you'd like more information on total reward statements. And as you click through those, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Thanks, Rose. Great job, everyone. That was a really great presentation. Um, few people are still uh, indicating whether or not they'd like more information on total remuneration statements. Um, I want to take this time to remind everybody that we will be sending out the presentation slide deck after this, uh, pre this webinar. And in that message, I'll also include a link where you can download Tom McMullen's article on our website. Um, if you have uh, any questions about um, seeing maybe some samples or maybe some more information, um, this, this would be a great time to just go ahead and click yes. Um, I did want to ask Rose um, real quick, um, one question we had come in was, um, from Karen, and she asked, is the, the example you use, is 500 the minimum that you can or will do? 
No, Karen. Actually, we can do um, as you know. We could do ten statements if that's what you would like. So we can do anywhere from ten all the way to more than twenty thousand. There's no there's no limit. And there's no minimum and no maximum. All right. And um, Sandra just asked, how can companies um, measure return on investment with TRS? So. Um, Maybe, who, who wants to answer that? Maybe Lucy, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, over the years, I mean, we've carried out a couple of studies which do show that there is um, a correlation between um, reward and investment and your reward spend. It really has to do with the effects um, of greater transparency and better employee understanding of reward, then leading to higher engagement, greater intention to stay. So the effect is really around retention. And companies who have used uh, reward statements in the past, we've got 75% of companies reporting an increase in employee engagement, which means people are more you know, willing to stay with the company for much longer. And then that in return has other effects on revenue growth and turnover rates. So we've seen 40% lower turnover rates, increased customer satisfaction, and a 10% increase in employee performance. So there is actually a correlation between reward communications and the effect on company performance. And uh, another question here. On the portal where um, an employee can change the language, is it possible, Rose, to convert the currency as well? You can't convert the currency between currencies once the statement's been published. But what you can do is publish, and I'm going to click back to the portal and show this to you. Um, you can provide statements to employees in their native currencies. And so what you're looking at on screen is a statement for Natsuki. And rather than seeing her text in English and her the monetary values in U.S. dollars, you're seeing Japanese text and you're seeing Japanese yen. I can go up here and I can change the statement to English but you notice the currency stays in the employee's native currency. Thanks, Rose. And Krista, hopefully that answered your question. We uh, have a question here from Tina. She asks, um, they've produced printed statements for many years. Uh, next year, they want to offer the option of an electronic or downloadable statement. How could they create an opt-in for this? The default would continue to be printed statements, but they'd like to at least have the option to opt in for electronic or downloadable statements. Rose, do you have a suggestion for that? And so I'm going to share the application again with you to show you one way that you could tackle that. When you're logged in to the portal, you can generate a PDF, a one-page or four-page or eight-page summary of the statement that the employee can print out. And so if I go to um, my documents on the right, I can see, uh, hang on, I think I'm going to have to share another application with you. should now be able to see the statement that was instantly generated in real time for the employee that we were just looking at. And so you can elect to do an online deliverable and the employee can then, on demand, generate a copy of a PDF that they could then email to their spouse or print for their records or whatever they wanted to do with it. Great. Thanks, Rose. And Tina, thanks for that question. That was great. Sandra asks, um, how many Canadian clients do we have that use our online statements? And do we have the ability to provide statements in Canadian French? We have a few companies that are U.S.-based that have operations in Canada, and we do statements for them, and we do provide the statements to them in French-Canadian dollars. Great. And we're going to go ahead and continue in listen-only mode because uh, we have quite a few folks on the call, so I ask that you just keep sending in your questions through the chat feature. Um, Dave, uh, one client asks, our company does not have a reward policy. 
Do we need one before communicating to clients or to employees? Well, I guess I'd start uh, by saying that you do have a policy. It's just not written down. Uh, now, you know, when you ask a consultant a question, you often hear back the answer, it depends. And in this case, it also depends. Because people will mean different things when they ask a question like that and say, we don't have our policy written down. Sometimes it simply means the policy isn't explicit. You know, pay and benefit programs are more or less effectively designed. You know, the program is well put together. Uh, employees and, the, and managers, the owners, owners, are content with pay levels, even if employees don't really appreciate the full value of their total remuneration. And, and we don't see other signs like unwanted turnover or exceptionally low rescores on, uh, low, uh, on the reward-related questions in employee engagement surveys. So in some cases, it simply means that the primary focus can be on communication. The reward program is in okay shape. It simply hasn't been communicated. And in that case, even though the policy isn't written down, you can get the, get the message out. You can use the 10 tips, the top 10 tips that Lucy talked about. You can reinforce that with the total reward statements, and you can help make the benefits of the reward program more meaningful to employees. Now, on the other hand, sometimes when people say, I don't have a policy, they mean I don't got nothing. Uh, it really signals that the company doesn't know how competitive or how well designed their, their pay package is. And that kind of organization's managers probably won't be able to explain, certainly not clearly, uh, the rationale behind pay decisions. And employees might just come to the conclusion that pay levels and benefit plan designs are below average. You know, because if they were average or better, the company would be telling us about it. They're not telling us. So, in fact, they're a little bit ashamed of what's going on. In those sorts of cases, what you might want to do is to start by finding out how competitive your reward program is. Now, Rose mentioned that, that the methodology behind the value-based uh, total remuneration statements is the same as we use in our total remuneration surveys. So the same set of data can be used to assess competitiveness, and then you can actually use that same data set to produce total remuneration statements if you wish to do that. Now, depending upon what you find out of the assessment of competitiveness, uh, you'll decide whether there's an urgent need to fix some part of the program, and with that decision, you'll be able to figure out whether you should involve uh, and how you should involve managers and employees in the communication process. My only recommendation to you is to have a bias towards involvement in communication. If you find yourself saying, well, we'll communicate this in a couple of years down the road, you're probably missing a real opportunity. Kayla? Thanks, Steve. That was definitely a great answer. Um, Lucy, we actually had another question kind of similar to um, the ROI question earlier, and it's basically just how um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit on how reward communication affects employee engagement. Hi, thanks, Kayla. So, and, and I can go back to um, the previous question that I talked about before. One thing that we've also done, um, and we do this again with Hey Group, is because we run um, a lot of um, engagement questionnaires, not just you know internally but for our clients, we've basically used this to gauge, as part of the research that we do, what the responses have been across the years for clients we work with regularly in terms of the relationship between the level of communication around reward um, and we've used the employee engagement survey a lot for this purpose. So what we have found is that, you know, certain actions when done and done well will lead to specific, uh, you know, observable differences. And it's really more about communicating reward in a more transparent manner, building your employer brand around reward. So telling people everything that you're providing, making your work environment a positive place to be as I said, it's not really just about the tangible and the measurable, you know, quantifiable monetary value. There's also the intangibles as well. So everything that you do around communicating this and building your brand and making it stronger then has essentially a higher engagement effect, um, and that's something that we're able to measure. Thanks, Lucy. And Sandra asked, um, while you were explaining that, what is your engagement rate for organizations who um, develop TRS? For example, do you see companies drop 
the use of TRS after a period of time. Historically, companies have communicated that they did not see the return on investment and stopped producing statements. Do you have any insight about that? Lucy, I'm going to jump into that as Rose, if you don't mind. We, um, I don't have specific engagement rates, but I can tell you that of the clients that we provide statements for, whether they are print or online, they've been clients for uh, many years in a row. And so the clients that we work with continue to see some need um, for the statements and, and can somehow justify the ROI for those statements. In the instances where we have lost a client, it's been due to budget constraints or perhaps a merger where, you know, one company is absorbed by another and the other company is already providing them. And so we've seen um, continued use steady um, annually. Every once in a while we'll have a client who skips a year and does the, the survey every other year or the statements every other year. Still having questions come through here. Um, Eric asks, what portions of the statements are actually customizable for country-specific content and programs? So these statements are customizable for countries because, you know, benefits vary widely by country. And so we work with you to build your statements to highlight the benefits that are important for the employees in each of those countries. And so they are very customizable. And I noticed another question came in the chat, which is, can you remove fields based on the employee or the position? And that, yes, you can do that. So, for example, if an employee is not eligible for a bonus, instead of seeing a bonus line item in their statement with a zero in it, which would not be a great motivator, they would simply not see that line item at all. Great. And that question came from Karen, who also just asked, do you have um, – clients who use TRS as part of their job offer. Therefore, candidates have a total picture of what is being offered to them. That is a great idea. So, yes, we can. Um, I have to share my application with you again, so bear with me. I'm going to share the application, and you're going to see that the online module and also the paper, paper statements can be used to develop a statement for prospective employers. I've logged in as Jane, who is an admin in the system. When I click into the admin module, there are a few things that you can see. Number one, she can see some analytics on which of her folks are using the site and how often. But she can also, under people, create a letter for a, new, a, a potential new employee. And these are all customizable by business unit or by department. And so if we want to send the letter today to Joe, and I'm not going to fill in all the fields, but I want to, he's going to work in the U.S. versus Japan or Spain or the U.K., and he's going to work in the IT department, and he's eligible for the accelerated um, benefits program that's been up, uploaded into the system. We type in his salary and click Submit. And give me a moment while I share my application again. And you should now see on your screen a PDF. Oops, hang on a minute. It's not there. I forgot to click the Share button. So now you should see on screen a letter that looks as if it comes from Hay Group to Joe Smith. And the text advises, you know, we're happy to have you thinking about joining us, and it's signed by the head of human resources. And when you get into the next page, there is a very clear outline of not only the base pay that he's going to receive by coming to your organization, but what his potential bonus is, what his potential earnings through the 401k plan are, the value of his medical insurance and lifestyle benefits that he would have. And these, these letters can be one page or they can be 30 pages. And so you can lay out for your new employee exactly what they're going to receive if they accept your offer of employment. Great. And thanks, Karen, for that question. Rose, um, so how much does the custom approach cost about? 
So the custom approach, as you can imagine, is more expensive than the off-the-shelf solution. It's really driven by a large number of factors. First, it depends on how many vendors that you're using for your benefits, and so how many sources of data are we going to need to collect and tie together and then review for accuracy. And then it's going to depend on how complex you want to make the website. It's going to depend on whether you want to do the website in conjunction with a print statement. And so this is not an inexpensive option. Um, we have uh, probably annual engagements that range from 35 up through $90,000 and beyond, depending on the number of statements, the number of employees, and the complexity of what we're designing for clients. Great, and um, Lucy, maybe this one's more geared towards you, but do we have clients who provide TRS to unionize employees? We do. I think uh, uh, that that's pretty applicable to um, both the offers, the um, online one, and to the non, and to the paper-based ones. Uh, and so, what you do there is a lot of pre-release communication around that to just make sure that this isn't negatively uh, received. Um, in some cases, you might have run your the employee representative through this again in separate sessions, pretty much the same way you would do with your line manager. So it can be positively received. Uh, you just have to make sure that you get your pre-communications right. So just do the groundwork, and then you shouldn't have any problem with the way the message is received. Gotcha. And does anyone else have any other questions? We're um, starting to slow down here. Or presenters, do you have anything that maybe you want to add that some of these questions might have reminded you about? This would be a good time to send in any last-minute questions or requests. Doesn't look like anybody's going to send anything in here. But um, I guess I'll just take this time to wrap it up then. We um, thank you so much for joining us today. Again, I will be sending out a message to everyone with the presentation slides and the link to download Tom McMullen's article that we mentioned earlier in the presentation. So um, feel free to reach out to us where our contact information will be on that message and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So with that, have a great day and thank you so much.